This video lecture is on the conjugate gradient method. The conjugate gradient method is useful for solving convex optimization problems. This means that we have some f of x, in this case 1 third x squared plus 1 third y squared plus 1 fifth xy, and we would like to find its minimum. We can do this by looking at the isocontour graph of the function f. We can compute the minimum analytically or, by looking at the isocontour graph, notice that it is at 0, 0. Suppose that we started off with an initial guess of negative 4, 1, represented by the black dot on the map. Using this initial guess, we want to find the minimum. One method we can employ is gradient descent. What gradient descent does is compute the gradient of f at the initial guess. We have plotted here the negative gradient of f since that is the direction of decreasing values of f. What we can then do is take this section of f that is along the gradient line. This reduces the search problem into a TOD problem which is much easier to solve. We then find the minimum of the function value along the gradient line. This is relatively easy, and we can employ many different methods to do this, including Newton's method. Once we have found the minimum along the gradient line, we can look at it on the isocontour graph. Notice that the minimum along the gradient line is closer to the goal than the original point. We can use this minimum along the gradient line as the next guess of the minimum point. We can then compute the gradient at this new point. Notice that this new gradient must be orthogonal to the previously computed gradient. If it was not orthogonal, that means that there is a component that is along the previous gradient. This means that we could travel further along the previous gradient to reach a more optimal point. We again find the minimum of the section of the curve that is along the gradient line. Once we have found the minimum again, this will be closer to the goal than the original point. We can now use that as our next guess. Our final path, once we have done this several times, will look somewhat like this. One problem with gradient descent is that this path will form a zigzag. Ideally, we would have liked to take a slightly larger step than we did and reach a point for which the next step led directly to the goal. Even better would be to take a step along the gradient such that the gradient at the next point would still be orthogonal and would reach us to the goal. This is the key idea behind the conjugate gradient method. Suppose we had an n-dimensional feature space. In the conjugate gradient method, we search n conjugate directions such that progress made in one direction does not affect progress made in the other directions. Thus, we only need to search n in n directions to find the optimal point. For two vectors to be conjugate or q orthogonal, we can define the inner product of the two vectors u and v as u transpose q v. If the two vectors u and v are conjugate, then the inner product will be zero. A set of n q orthogonal vectors will form a basis of Rn. This means that they are all independent. In our case, q is the Hessian of, the, of f, the function we are trying to minimize. Specifically, for our initial minimization problem of f of x equals 1 third x squared plus 1 third y squared plus 1 fifth xy, we can rewrite this function as 1 half x transpose times some matrix times x minus x transpose times some other matrix. This generalized version of the function 
will be used to demonstrate the conjugate gradient method. Note that the gradient of this generalized function is qx minus b. If we are trying to minimize f, we are solving for when this gradient is zero, specifically when qx is equal to b. In order to use the conjugate gradient method, suppose we had nq orthogonal vectors, d1 through dn. We can represent the minimum of the function f of x, let us call this variable x star, as a linear combination of these n orthogonal vectors. As we said before, the vectors d1 through dn span Rn. Thus, we can represent any vector as a linear combination of the q orthogonal vectors. Oops. Looking at this equation again, we can multiply both sides by the matrix Q. Notice that Qx star is equal to b at the minimum. Thus, we have that b is a linear combination of q times the original q orthogonal vectors. If we multiply both sides by one of these vectors, say dk, we notice that the vectors dk and di are q orthogonal. This means that for every value of k not equal to i, the inner product is zero. Thus, we can simplify this equation as follows. This simplified equation allows us to solve for alpha. Dividing both sides by dk transpose q dk, we have an expression for alpha. Once we have alpha, we can now calculate the minimum value of f directly by taking a linear combination of the nq orthogonal vectors with proportions as determined by alpha. What remains to start the conjugate gradient method is to find nq orthogonal vectors. We can do this by finding the set of vectors v such that q times v is equal to some constant lambda times v. This set v are the eigenvectors of the matrix q. In general, finding the eigenvectors is inefficient. A better method to find nq orthogonal vectors is to generate them dynamically. Given some initial guess x1, we can calculate the first orthogonal vector as the negative gradient. We can then calculate the corresponding alpha with which we can increment the initial guess to get the second guess. In order to calculate the second orthogonal vector, we must first calculate the gradient at this new guess, g2. We can then use that to calculate a step size along which we can increment g2 in order to get the new orthogonal vector. In general, we can generate nq orthogonal vectors and find the minimal solution as follows. Given some initial guess, x1, we can calculate the first orthogonal vector as the negative gradient evaluated at this initial guess. We can then calculate the value for alpha and use that to update our guess. We then calculate beta and use that to update the value of the orthogonal vector. If we do this iteratively, we end up with a final value of x that is close to our optimal solution. We now see the conjugate gradient method in action on our original problem. In the first iteration, the algorithm takes a step size of 1.4 along the gradient to reach the point negative 0.41, 1.19. In the second iteration, the algorithm takes a step size of 1.7 along the gradient to reach the optimal solution within 10 to the negative 16. This concludes the video lecture on conjugate gradient method.